to start with an exclusive story about how one local elementary school has taken gender ideology too far and how parents, thank God for these parents, are starting to push back. This is, I think, really a um, follow-up to stories we've been doing uh, for the past year on the Olympia School District, which I think is the wokest school district in America. And certainly Olympia, Washington's a very progressive community. And so I'm not necessarily surprised around some of the things they've tried to push on race and racism. We've talked about a couple of those stories, them creating BIPOC safe spaces where kids of color can meet with no white kids allowed. There was also a story having to do with a woman named Talana Reed, who was appointed to the school board despite being shown in video during a social justice protest in 2021, calling cops pigs and encouraging demonstrators to burn the entire or to destroy the entire city to get the, the, the attention of the police. In fact, on Sundays with subscribers, we had a mom on named uh, Alicia Perkins, who said it was really those stories around race and racism being pushed on kids that encouraged her to find her voice and to speak up. And that was kind of a straw that broke the camel's back and really ignited a fire under me and I know a lot of other community members to say what is going on. So Alicia let us know after we had her on on Sundays with subscribers, we got an email from her saying, hey guys, this is perhaps the worst thing that I have seen happen at the district so far. And so that's what we want to talk about today. A warning if you're watching on the feed. Some of it's weird, bizarre. I guess it's kind of gross. It's uh, depictions of vaginas and penises, but we're all adults here. So just a heads up, if you're watching it with your kid in the room, you might want to tell your kid to leave. So a little bit of, I'll set this up, this up for you before we get into some of what these kids were taught. This happened at Lincoln Elementary School, uh, which is in the Olympia School District. It happened on May 9th, and parents knew that fourth and fifth graders at this elementary were going to be taught some sex ed curriculum. But what they were actually taught in the classroom was not what parents were told they were going to be taught, and it was nothing that was approved by parents, and in fact, the district or the school claims that it wasn't even approved by them. So I'm going to detail some of what was in a pamphlet, a booklet given to these kids. And again, how old is a fourth and fifth grader? Nine, nine years old. So I want you to really think about that as we dive into what sex ed, these nine-year-olds maybe, nine, ten-year-olds were being taught at this elementary school in Olympia. So the whole, I guess, basis of it, you know, they were taught in part about what to expect during puberty, but also a lot of it had to do with gender identity. One of the pages in this booklet, and this is an exclusive, you're hearing it and seeing it first on Undivided, depicted pictures of vaginas and penises, okay, little drawings of all the different ways that vaginas and penises might look. More than a dozen pictures. It also had examples of intersex private parts and what those might look like. It said bodies can look all sorts of ways. It said it's okay if you don't look like one of these photos. It's impossible to represent everyone in just a few photos. Every body is a good body. Again, pictures of vaginas, penises, intersex variations. There was one image that is incredibly bizarre to me. I'm not really sure what to make of it. It's grouped in with the pictures of what a vagina might look like. And it shows just a picture of a cat, a pussy cat, <laughs> where a vagina should be. And I'm thinking to myself, is that just a playful way, like a play on the word? Is that, and I wouldn't put it past them, is that supposed to be like representative of a furry, someone who identifies and dresses up like a cat or a dog or some sort of animal. So very strange stuff. But I will say, you know, that to me, I can have like a good chuckle at that. Like, why do they have a cat uh, instead of a vagina? But some of this other stuff is just straight up sick, in, in my opinion. And also, you know, not in line with anything scientific that kids ought to be taught about 
sex ed. For instance, there was a page in this booklet that shows some items that you might need during puberty, when, when puberty hits for you. Again, fourth and fifth graders here. And some of the items that they're showing on this page make a lot of sense. A tampon, okay, you would want to know what a tampon is. You might need that when you hit puberty. Uh, you might need a pad when you hit puberty. You might need ra a razor or a bra. You might have to start to wear a bra if you're a young woman. Again, that doesn't necessarily bother me. What bothers me is the fact that on this page, that shows pictures of items that they might need when they hit puberty is a puberty blocker. Right next to the picture of the razor and the deodorant stick and the sports bra and the jock strap is an image of Serpraline LA, which is a small flexible implant that is prescribed as a puberty blocker. Help me understand when you're teaching kids in fourth and fifth grade about puberty, why you would feel the need to include a puberty blocker implant and also include the brand name of it alongside pictures of razors and deodorant. That doesn't make any sense. That's very strange. So the lesson goes on to talk about something called the gender wheel. Now, I don't think it'll come as a surprise to people that you have some school districts who are talking about the issue of gender and how gender is fluid. You know, we've heard stories on this. But the gender wheel these kids were shown in this Olympia Elementary School takes things to a whole new level and it almost presents it as a game. So I actually went and got a high res image of this gender wheel from genderwheel.com, which if you care to explore more about what the gender wheel is, but it's presented as a game where it has this circle. There's actually three concentric circles and you can turn each of them. The outer circle represents how someone might appear, you know, what, what their body might look like. The center circle talks about how someone might feel, what they might feel they present as. And then the inner circle is pronouns. So you can turn each circle until you find a combination that a child believes fits how they might feel. The gender uh, wheel reads, the wheel is alive. All of the circles turn to show the infinite dance that includes every body inside and outside, as well as out in the world. At the moment, the gender wheel is turned to show one person's place in the dance. When any of the circles of the wheel turn just a tiny bit in either direction, another place in the dance opens up, another place where someone belongs. And here's the, the line that really got me. Words and ways of thinking are changing all the time as old, limiting beliefs transform and evolve. So for instance, on this gender wheel, if you can put that back up, Nicole. For instance, on the gender wheel, you could turn it so that you have someone who identifies as intersex, uh, presents as a femboy, and uses the pronouns zay, zem. You could have someone who identifies as trans, uses the, or um, shows as a masculine girl. And one of the pronoun options is Tree, yes, tree, T-R-E-E. -E. I saw that, I was like, Nicole, does that say tree? Mm -hmm. And indeed, it says tree, like that, as if, and again, this is a lesson for fourth and fifth graders, as if a perfectly reasonable pronoun for a fourth or fifth grader to identify as is a tree. This is insane. Any rational person, and why don't I show you, because I don't think it's going to be a surprise, where this gender wheel comes from. On the website, it talks about the um, person who founder, founded the gender wheel. It says, Maya Gonzalez is a Chicanx, Chicana X, gender queer femme with three decades of experience as an independent researcher with a specific focus on LGBTQ and suppressed history. Maya is also an artist, author, progressive educator, and co-founder of Reflection Press. That's the person who created the wheel that was shown and taught to fourth and fifth graders at a public elementary school.
in Washington state. This is insane. For any reasonable person, any reasonable parent, and even if you were a parent who saw some of that and thought, man, that's not problematic. This is not what parents were told that their kids were going to be taught. And in fact, the Olympia School District has, or the um, elementary school principal at the specific elementary school has admitted as much. We've reviewed some emails because thank God there was not one parent, not two parents, multiple parents who found out what their child had been taught. Either their booklet was brought home, one parent actually went to the school, heard about this, fished the booklet out of their kid's desk, and they are raising hell about it. And so we've reviewed some um, interactions back and forth where the principal of this school essentially says that the presenter who was with the teen council, so Planned Parenthood, this wasn't a teacher presenting this, this was an outside presenter from Planned Parenthood, that they went off script, that this is not what they told the school they were gonna teach the kids. That's according to the principal of this school. The principal ultimately sent out an email saying, we're investigating the matter and working with staff to get more information to determine next steps. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. And again said, that this was the, the presenter with the teen council went off script and that specific presenter won't be invited back to the school. Now they didn't say that teen council or Planned Parenthood wouldn't be invited back to the school, but specifically that that presenter who went off script would not be invited back to the school. But again, this is the kind of stuff that is so critically important for parents to A, find out about, you know, to look at what is my kid bringing home you know, thank God some parent reviewed what their kid brought home in their backpack and was like, what the hell is this? Or else we would have no idea about this stuff. And who knows if the school would just keep doing it. If there was no pushback, maybe it's something the school would just keep doing. But it goes back to what Alicia Perkins said on Sundays with subscribers, and if you haven't watched our interview with her, I highly recommend you do it, um, about the importance of reasonable, rational parents pushing back and speaking out. And for the first time of the Olympia School District, all these stories we've been doing, this is the first time that I can recall that the school has actually expressed some sort of, I wouldn't call it remorse, but acknowledgement that this was a mistake. You know, with the BIPOC segregated groups for kids, with eliminating fourth and fifth, or fourth grade wind and band because of ties to white supremacy. The pushback that's happened publicly about those stories, there hasn't been some sort of mea culpa. And in this case, it really seems as if the principal is like, hey, our bad, this was a mistake. It's not going to happen again. And so I think the constant pressure is a really good thing. Now, Nicole, I'll bring you in here because Nicole and I had a little debate about this story. I was like, well, I'm going to do a write-up about this, but I need to put it behind a paywall because we need some stuff behind a paywall right. for our subscribers. Nicole's like, absolutely not. Well, I just think uh, that it's important to get it to I every agree. single person, regardless of if they're willing to subscribe, because I think it is so important. All parents look for this stuff in their kids' curriculum because this yeah. parent specifically said that they found it when they were looking through stuff and they asked their kid why they didn't share it. And he said he was embarrassed. Like, right. of course they are. Yeah, it's pictures this is embarrassing. Of private parts for a, for <laughs> mm -hmm. a nine-year-old. So you want out, because I'm like, you know, trying to look out for the business, <laughs> like, hey, I need to make sure that we're, we're putting stuff out there just for subscribers. And Nicole's like, no, we can't hide that behind a paywall. So right now, just now on Patreon and Locals, um, we've published an in-depth article on this story, including pictures in the pamphlets. There is no paywall. So please share it far and wide to make sure parents know and are on the lookout for what's happening in their kids' schools. We've promised you guys we're going to do more of a focus on education uh, now that the legislative session is behind us. So after the show today, please go share it. You can read it, even if you're not a subscriber. If you want to become a subscriber to support our please show, do. that would be amazing. But Nicole's right. <laughs> we we need to make sure every single possible parent sees this. I so, just think it's sneaking in in places. Sneaking you, in. You, I mean, these parents had approved. They knew the class was happening. They had approved the topics. And then this gets snuck in there. And it's not just somebody standing up there going off script. This is a, something that was printed out for the kids. So right. somebody knew this was printed. Somebody knew that she had these handouts and that they were approved so and think of it's how being many snuck in think of how many eyeballs have been on the gender wheel or have been on those depictions mm -hmm. of private parts and said oh yeah this is cool to teach to kids the, the picture of the the vagina that has a cat face on it 
think of how many, I don't know if they thought they were being cheeky right. or if it really, I, w I wouldn't rule out the fact that it has to do with furries. Like people might identify as a cat. Well, it's just, yeah, I think they I were mean, trying would you to be rule funny that out? and yeah. trying to, you know, make the kids laugh at it. And no, it's, it's not appropriate, obviously. It's not. Yes, it's not appropriate. It's insane. So go <sighs> share that story far and wide so people know what's happening in their schools. And a big thank you to Alicia Perkins for, I think, setting an example for a lot of parents right. that, hey, we can't be quiet about this stuff. We and need to speak when, reasonably about it and push back. Right. And when this uh, sex ed curriculum pay was, you know, changed the last few years and when we were talking to Chris Reichdahl about it, the superintendent of uh, public ed education, he he swore things like this wouldn't get into this curriculum. He swore that there was going to be, uh, you know, it was just teaching kids to report when people were touching them wrong or whatever it which was. Which is great. Fine. Which is fine. Yes. But no, this stuff is getting snuck in and keep an eye out. And I, I plan to reach out to him and say, you know, what what are we doing to making to make sure that people aren't going off script? Right, exactly. Somebody needs to be fired, right. to be frank. Somebody knew about that. And I also think about, you know, it's like, uh, headline grabbing as the pictures of the vaginas and the penises are, to me, that puberty blocker thing oh. is almost the most malicious because yes. I don't know if you can recall that, that image for us again, for people who are watching, because yes. it's, you're putting it next to things that are so mundane. Right. And I think that your puberty is obviously not always represented as the most fun thing to go through. It's right. not fun. Right. And so they're saying, here's how you block it. Right. right. So th that comes across as something that might help them when that is not at all what that is for. And there is nothing helpful about that, I guess, unless you're in a medical situation where that's necessary. There are some medical so, reasons. But yes. when you put it next to a stick of deodorant, a razor, mm -hmm. a jock strap, and all of that, you are normalizing it in a way yes. that's that's really kind of evil. And I don't use the word evil often. Mm -hmm. Not only are you putting a picture of it, you're putting the brand name mm -hmm. of the implant to say to this fourth and fifth grader, oh, here's your stick of deodorant. Here's your uh, training bra. Here's your tampon. And here is your puberty blocking implant. Yep. You guys, <laughs> that wild. is wild.